Yo guys, Ponchi here, and today we're going to be talking about the filter envelope. And this video is part of a series that I'm doing in regards to the different aspects of synthesizers, um, the different sections. So far, I've already done one video about the volume envelope. And so today we'll be talking about the filter envelope. So I'm kind of going to assume that you saw the last video. Um, I will link it down below. And... Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the filter envelope. So there's a couple different aspects of this. Um, the filter envelope, um, of course, is different from the volume envelope in that it affects the filter and not just the volume. So there's a couple of things we need to talk about in regards to the filter. I will be doing a separate video just on the filter, but in reality, the filter and the envelope go hand in hand. Um, however, it is possible for you to not use the envelope at all and just use the filter, hence why I'll be doing a video just on the filter. So, um, in this case, so I'm going to go ahead, so if you, some synths don't have a filter envelope, um, at least not in this sense with the attack, decay, and sustain separate from the attack, decay, and sustain of the volume envelope. So um, this is the Roland SEO2. It's a great little synth. I believe it's an analog synth. Um, and it's, uh, this is the key bed um, that you can use with these. You can also just take this out and use it as a module. This is not a sponsored video, but uh, I think that's really cool that uh, you can use it with this or with you know any MIDI keyboard, of course. Anyway, um, so. I'm going to go ahead and turn the attack all the way down, the decay all the way down, and then the sustain all the way up, and then open the filter all the way. Um, emphasis in this case is resonance, so you don't necessarily need any emphasis or resonance, resonance excuse me, to do this, but I'm going to leave that there, about four. And then contour. Contour... Um, I have the Poly D, the Behringer Poly D, and that that actually calls it the amount of contour. But uh, on the Moogs, if you have a Moog, for example, um, they usually call it uh, filter amount, which I think is more intuitive than calling it contour. But uh, what they're referring to in this case, um, essentially, is the, um, you know, like the Poly D says, the amount well, what the contour refers to is essentially if you were to draw out, uh, you know, the envelope, like the different stages of the envelope, you know, it would go, like the attack would go up, you know, the decay would come back down, the sustain would be like a straight line. So that's what they're referring to when they talk about contour. So, and then also, some synths uh, have uh, essentially negative contour. Um, so that essentially, whatever contour you've set with the ADS, the attack, decay, sustain, you can invert it. In this case, it just says invert. So you would just flip that and then, um, you know, however much contour you add, that essentially uh, would be the complete opposite. You know, whatever you have set here, invert, of course, is the complete opposite. So we're going to leave it on normal for now. I'm not going to talk too much about that, but like on the Mo Grandmother, for example, um, it doesn't say invert. It just has like the zero is in the middle at 12 o'clock, and then inverting it would be going to the left, whereas normal would be just going to the right. So, so in this case, this is what it sounds like. that's what it sounds like when the filter is wide open and we're essentially not applying any of the envelope because the contour is at zero. So if we add some contour, what do we get? It sounds exactly the same. And the reason for that is because we haven't set anything here. So let's go ahead and turn up the attack and see what happens. You'll notice once again, nothing happens. 
Now the reason for that is because the filter is already wide open. So uh, let's turn the attack back down and then of course turn the cutoff down. What do you get? You know, you get that, uh, you know, lovely filter sound that we all love. You know, that awesome, uh, you know, kind of muted filtered sound. So if we turn the attack up back to where we had it just after 12 o'clock, more like one o'clock, what do you get? get more of that uh, fade in sound that we were talking about but you'll notice uh, that we were talking about in the the last video but you'll notice that the volume envelope of course has remained unchanged so what's happening here is the attack is controlling how quickly the filter is opening up so essentially it starts the attack it starts from where you have the cutoff because if we do it without the attack, you just get that filtered sound. But if you turn up the attack, you can hear that essentially what's happening is the same thing as doing this. except you don't have to do that. The attack does it for you. Now you may have noticed, uh, you know, when you first started messing around with synths, um, you know, the envelope amount or the contour, you know, allows you to kind of set the cutoff differently than if you had no contour. So if we turn the contour down, you can tell that, you know, the note is essentially filtered out. There's nothing happening. So if we turn up the contour, then it activates the envelope and then it messes with the filter based on how you have this set. So that's the power of the filter. So let's mess with the decay. Let's turn the attack back down, turn the decay up and hold a note and see what happens. Now, of course, when you mess with the decay with the sustain up, you essentially get nothing, nothing happens. So what we got to do in this case is turn the sustain down and then listen to what happens. So what you're doing with the decay here is essentially the opposite of what the attack was doing. So the decay is starting the note starting the filter wherever the cutoff is set. And then it's as if you're turning the cutoff down instead of opening it up. So that's what the decay controls. So with that in mind, if you turn the attack up and the decay to pretty much the same place, then you get an interesting effect. So what you're getting here the attack is controlling the cutoff. Um, you know, it's as if you're opening the cutoff and then the decay controls, uh, you know, closing the cutoff essentially. Then if you add some delay, this, I like this synth because it has delay. You can get a really cool sound. You know, kind of that spacey, like cinematic kind of sound. So the final one is the sustain. So that essentially, if we turn the attack down, 
turn the decay all the way up. Um, well, no, we can turn the decay down as well. So the sustain essentially sustains the filter wherever the cutoff is while you're holding the note. So that's pretty self-explanatory. So if you don't want to mess with the attack and the decay, mess with the sustain. You'll notice if you mess with the sustain while you're holding the note, it actually kind of controls the filter a little bit. Or rather, it kind of messes with the cutoff. So if the sustain is all the way up, that's where that's exactly the point where the cutoff is. However, if you turn the sustain down, that's as if you're doing this with the uh, with the filter cutoff. You know, you're kind of giving it that. Uh, th you know, the sustain is another way to mess with sweeping the filter, so to speak. So. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off here just to keep things short. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to leave them down below. I guess one thing I should mention as well real quick, if you're looking for that kind of plucky sound, um, I've actually done a video on this before, but uh, in regards to the Analog 4. But in this case, if you're looking for that plucky sound, turn your decay up leave your attack and sustain down. And if you find the sweet spot, you really get that snappy, plucky, rubber band kind of sound out of your synth. Then of course, it also depends on where the cutoff is. Add a little delay. You get some pretty cool sounds. You know, the plucky sound is great for, uh, you know, more EDM type stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off there. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any um, recommendations or, uh, you know, requests for videos, feel free to leave them down below. I promise I will get to your... Uh, comments and questions as soon as possible. Um, I have been a little, um, you know, I've been away a little bit lately, so I want you to know that I will indeed get to your questions, and I do certainly see them. That's the main thing. I do see them even if I don't respond right away, so um, I appreciate all of the uh, positive feedback that you guys have sent to me. And um, I will be doing more videos on, uh, you know, general aspects of synths here. Um, you know, I'll try to change up the synths a little bit so that way you can kind of see that these, these concepts do indeed apply to any synth. And, uh, you know, once you have these concepts down, you know, with the oscillators, the mixer, um, the filter, all the envelopes, the LFO, you know, any of that stuff, like you will indeed, hopefully by the end of this uh, tutorial, this series, uh, be able to use any synth. And, you know, it won't necessarily matter, um, you know, what synth you use, you'll be able to use it. You know, and all this stuff looks pretty daunting when you first start out, but, you know, slowly but surely, once you start to learn every single section, synths, you know, really are not that daunting and and you'll be able to use any of them so hope you guys have a good one see you in the next video